Hey folks, Barnaby Dixon here. So a quick recap. Last episode, I looked into the possibility of 3D scanning my most iconic character, Dabchick, because the plastic is degrading. By the end of the episode, I was able to assemble a 3D model of Dabchick in Blender. In this episode, I'm keen to look into the possibility of 3D printing him so that we can take him out of the digital realm and back into the real world where he can snort his strange substances, scoff his mushrooms and stare at cat buttholes. All very worthwhile pursuits. So as I mentioned last time, I have used 3D printing before, but this was for much larger scale puppets. And in this instance, we mostly printed the interior and the mechanisms. The surface details were made using a paper-like material called Tyvek. Uh, this had some really nice translucent properties too, so we were able to light the puppets from within. But the main reason for using Tyvek was to keep the weight of the puppets down. Now, these weight concerns aren't really relevant to Dabchik given his small scale, but what I would like to do is print the surface and the mechanisms and, well, as much of him as possible, actually. The problem is, the 3D printers I've used in the past, well, they're good for printing large-scale things, they're not so good for printing smaller-scale things and finer details, specifically. So I looked into a different type of 3D printing that uses resin and is able to get those finer details. So after a little bit of research, it was clear that resin printers have been capable of getting the detail required for a project like this for a number of years. So I was able to look at things that weren't necessarily cutting edge, but were more reliable and tried and tested. I much prefer those things. They're also cheaper too. On that note, my budget wasn't so big, so I was able to find something in the second hand market that was listed as used, but perfectly functional. So when the printer arrived, I assembled it and turned it on just to check if it did seem functional, but I wasn't ready to start printing at that point. I hadn't finished scanning Dabchick and I didn't have any resin. So once some had arrived and I'd finished the scanning job, I went to pour the resin into the vat, but found there was a small hole in the plastic film. Now this was a little bit annoying because obviously the seller had listed it as functional, but the hole was very small, so I was happy to give the seller the benefit of the doubt. I was quite relieved actually. I'd seen a tutorial where someone had poured resin into a vat with a hole in it and the resin had leaked all the way through the machine, through the screen, and the resin seemed like such a pain to clear up. If you do get a secondhand resin printer and you want to check whether this has happened or not, you can turn on the backlight to see if resin has leaked under the screen. Okay, this seems like my cue. If you're watching, you know who you are. You effed up the printer, cleaned up the outside so it appeared functional, listed it as such, and sold it to a fellow countryman, a simple man whose only aim is to bring joy to the world by playing with his toys. And now the return window is closed and you think you're home free, don't you? Listen, we have a whole army of basement-dwelling incels who would be very interested to know why the restoration of their avian overlord is taking so long. Since your <coughs> home address is on the packaging, I would only need to move my foot an inch or two and they'd know exactly where to send their concerns now. Now, wouldn't they? So here's what I need you to do. Pull yourself away from your anime erotica, you forgot to wipe the files off your flash drive, you dirty little weeb, and go start putting some good vibrations out into the world, and in a few years' time, when you're accepting the Nobel Prize for your charitable actions, remember which merciful little chick put you on this path. And then send us a refund, you little c***. There you go. Good girl. Soaking it seems to have done the trick, see? When they get juicy, they get loosey. Oh, look at that. That's a nice booger right there. So ideally, this will start turning in a... Yes! Okay. Okay, give me the little fella. Come on, little fella. There he is! <laughs> Do your little dance. There you go. So after a few days of disassembling, cleaning, and then reassembling, uh, the 3D printer was finally ready to print. And the results were awful. Let's take a look at you. Oh dear. Well, you got part way there, I suppose. I just couldn't seem to get a good result. Sometimes the object would print with a whole bunch of splits in it. And sometimes the resin would stick to the bottom of the vat and you'd end up with this kind of 
pancake style Dabchik head. So I think the problem in both cases was adhesion. Dabchik's pancake head was a result of it sticking too firmly to the plastic film and the layer wasn't able to be lifted up. And in the other cases where you get those splits, I think that's because the resin isn't sticking together. So you get those divisions there. Now I was able to come up with a solution that did work and that was by really bumping up the exterior supports on the object. Now if you have some experience with 3D printing this is going to look utterly ridiculous but it did the job. But it only did the job once. Every other print that I've done subsequently has also failed so uh, I still have a fair bit to learn. Anyway here are some beauty shots of that one print that kind of worked. I'm sure at this point I'm getting a lot of comments from people that understand resin printing a lot better and are telling me exactly what I'm doing wrong. But I do intend to have a meeting with someone very well versed in these practices, hopefully in the next episode. I do want to give a brief explanation as to how resin printing works because it's actually not very intuitive. Uh, I'm new to it myself and I may well make mistakes and if that ends up annoying the 3D printing boffins a little bit more then... oh dear. So in a resin printer, the resin is hardened or cured using UV light. So to demonstrate this, I have an obscenely powerful UV laser, and I'm gonna show you what it does to the resin. So I'm just going over the surface of the resin with the laser here, trying to keep my hands steady. Okay, so this is an artistic interpretation of the quality of my prints so far. Ordinarily, the container from the last video is placed on this screen here. Now, this screen here produces UV light and is able to expose the resin from beneath. That resin then sticks to this top plate that lifts up, lowers down again, exposing the next layer, and layer by layer, the object is built up. Now, imagine if, and this might be kind of hard <laughs> based on what you've seen already, imagine if I'm able to get consistently good results with the resin every time. Resin might not be the material that I print the final version of Dabchik in. It's fairly durable but it's not very UV stable and Dabchik isn't a museum piece. I take him out and about, we go in the sun, we go in the sea. Perhaps it's feasible to print spares every time something breaks or at least carry them with me. But if there was some version that could be printed that is a bit more resilient to Dabchik's lifestyle, then that would be preferable. Bear in mind too that I'm not just rebuilding Dabchik here, I'm kind of rethinking my process entirely and new decisions will be made along the way, I'm sure. I do, however, think that the resin printing is very useful at this stage of the production and I have a plan in the next episode to play around with scale in a way that should introduce a lot more detail, way more detail than I thought was possible, into the final version of Dabchik. So hit subscribe and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.